Once upon a time, there lived a brother and sister named Hansel and Gretel. Their mother had passed away when they were babies. They lived with their dad in a hut in the forest. Their dad was trying to earn their living by working as a woodcutter and was looking after the kids at the same time. A couple of years passed and struggling to juggle work and two kids at the same time, their dad decided to get married again. The woodcutter's wife was from a wealthy family and she hated the fact that they were poor and she had to live in a small ruined hut deep into the forest. Plus, she did not like her stepchildren at all. On a cold winter night, as they were getting ready for bed, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother talking to their dad. How are you going to get through this winter? We don't have enough food. If you do not get rid of these kids, we will all starve to death. Their dad opposed furiously. No need to argue. I made up my mind. Tomorrow we'll take them to the woods and leave them there. Hearing all that, Gretel started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> her brother Hansel comforted her. Please don't worry, Gretel. Somehow we'll find our way back home. Later that night, Hansel snuck out and collected as many pebbles as he could in his pockets. In the morning, they all started to walk towards the forest. Their father told them that they were going for a family hike. As they were walking, without anyone noticing, Hansel dropped the pebbles to mark the way back. In the afternoon, their dad and stepmother lit a fire and told them that they will be back soon. They walked off and vanished in the woods. Of course, they did not come back. When the night fell, the horrible sounds of all the wild animals in the forest started to echo around them. Shivering with the horrifying sounds of the wolves, Hansel and Gretel did not leave the fireside until the moonrise. Then they started to follow the pebbles shining in the moonlight and walk towards home. Well done, Ansel. This was very clever of you. When the kids came back home, their dad was very happy and surprised at the same time. Their stepmother also acted as if she was happy, but deep inside, her decision was still the same. She was very upset that they were back. After three days, the stepmother tried to get rid of them again. This time at night, she locked Hansel and Gretel's door and did not allow Hansel to collect pebbles again. But Hansel was a clever boy. When they were walking to the forest in the morning, this time he dropped the breadcrumbs that he had put in his pocket the night before and again made a trail all the way back home. Around noon, their father and stepmother made up an excuse and went off, leaving them all alone in the forest again. Realising that they were not coming back, Hansel and Gretel wanted to start walking back home before it got dark. But this time, they could not find the trail they left, because all the breadcrumbs were eaten by the birds. Gretel started crying. For the first time, Hansel also felt hopeless. This time the kids were really lost. With no food and scared to death, they wandered around the forest for three days. On the third day, they saw a bird, white as snow. The bird chirped songs with its beautiful voice for them. They forgot their hunger for a moment and started to follow the bird. The bird brought them in front of a funny looking house. This house had walls of bread, a roof made out of cake and windows of candy and was covered.
covered with colourful cream all around. Hansel and Gretel could not believe their eyes. The house looked incredibly delicious. The kids forgot all about how tired they were and started to run to the house. Just as they were both going to have a bite from the house, they heard a voice from inside. Oh! Now who is nibbling on my house? They looked around and they saw a cute and sweet old lady at the door. When they told her all about what had happened to them, she felt very bad for them and so she let them in. The inside of the house was very different from the outside. It was dark, scary and it didn't feel right. But because they were so tired and hungry, the kids did not care much. The old lady brought all kinds of food and desserts for them and the kids ate food that they hadn't had before. That night, they slept on the softest bed they had ever seen. When they woke up in the morning, the old lady wasn't there. They started to look around. At the end of the corridor, they saw a small door. When they opened the door, they found cases full of gold and treasure inside. They were very surprised, of course. Hansel wanted to get in and take a closer look. Right at that moment, they heard her voice again. And what do you think you are doing? When they turned around, the kids faced the witch standing right there in front of them. Apparently, the old lady was a witch leading the kids to a dungeon with a house covered with cake and candy. The kids tried to run away but the door was locked. The witch pulled Hansel by the hair and locked him in a cage. Then she dragged Gretel to the kitchen. for him and make him fat. When he's in good shape, he'll be a delicious meal for me. But don't you dare eat anything. All the food is only for him. Having no choice, Gretel did what she asked for. Fortunately, Hansel was a clever and wise boy. He decided to trick the evil-hearted witch. Every night when the witch was asleep, he was digging a hole in the ground of the cage. The witch was controlling Hansel every morning to see if he gained weight or not. But Hansel wasn't eating anything his sister cooked. Instead, he was burying them in the hole that he digged. In the meantime, the witch was telling Gretel to cook more. This went on for days until finally the witch had enough. Fat skinny! I don't care anymore! Today I will make Hansel pie! She turned to Gretel. Look in the oven to see if the dough is baked enough. Although she was in fear, Gretel was also a wise girl just like her brother. She understood that the witch was going to push her in the oven. I can't get my head in there and see the dough whined Gretel. The witch pushed her aside and stuck her head inside. Gretel gathered all her strength and pushed the old witch into the oven and closed the oven door. <coughs> Gretel knew where the witch was hiding the keys. She ran straight away and saved Hansel from the cage. The flames from the oven covered the whole house. Hansel and Gretel ran away from the burning house into the woods. But they did not know where to go. A while later, they came across a river. A giant swan took them one by one to the other side of the river. The kids looked around and suddenly they realised where they were. They ran home as fast as they could. Seeing his kids, father was full of joy. With tears of joy, 
He explained to them how their stepmother had gone back to her parents' house soon after they had left them in the forest. And how sorry he was for all that he did and no matter how hard he had searched for them, they were nowhere to be found. The kids loved their father very much, so they forgave him. But another surprise was waiting for their father. They both reached their pockets and brought out gold and diamonds they had found in the witch's home. Their father could not believe his eyes. All the problems that their family had ever had went away and they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a small but dense forest. The trees whispered to one another, and the flowers pollinated each other, and all the plants enjoyed being together as a forest. One day, one of the beautiful days of spring, between a cactus and a sunflower, a glowing seed started to grow. This growing flower was a gorgeous rose with crimson petals. Hello, my name is Rosie. I'm a cactus. Nice to meet you. Your petals are so beautiful, Rosie. I wish I had petals like yours. Thanks, but not everyone can be smart and beautiful and fragrant, right? <laughs> Rosie's haughty response surprised everyone. She was such an arrogant flower, even though she had just bloomed. I am obviously the most beautiful flower here. Look at my shiny petals. <laughs> there are lots of beautiful plants here, Rosie. You are just one of them. What? How dare you compare me with the prickly cactus? I am much more beautiful than he. Cactus was very upset about what he heard, and he could not say anything. It's not nice what you said to the cactus, Rosie. And you have thorns, too. Actually, it's not nice to compare a cactus with a beautiful rose like me. Huh? What would you know about beauty? You don't even bloom. Neither the cactus, nor the sunflower, or the trees could get used to Rosie's attitude because she was a flower that constantly praised herself. Days passed, and summer finally came. The sunflower was so happy. With her bright yellow face, she followed the sun's rays all day long. Cactus, on the other hand, drank the water he had stored throughout the winter and kept himself vigorous and healthy all summer long. Even some tiny birds visited the cactus to drink water. Other plants were not able to store water like cactus for this hot weather. And Rosie even began to wilt because of thirst. <gasps> Will it ever rain here? Winter has to come for it to rain, Rosie. But I am about to wither from this thirst. All my beauty is gone. You can ask Cactus for help if you want. Rosie saw that the cactus was happy to help other flowers, but she was too proud to speak up because she always said bad words to him. However, when another petal withered and fell from her head, she put her pride aside and was willing to be embarrassed. She asked the cactus for help. Hey, cactus, I'm sorry for the cruel words I said to you and Pine Tree. You are both beautiful and very useful plants for this forest. Can you help me too? Cactus saw that Rosie was choosing to be humble and had put her arrogance aside, so he shared his water with her. She could feel life spring up inside her once again, and her bright petals spread out in the rays of the sun. From that day on, 
Rosie learned not to judge her friends by their looks. Because no matter how different we look from each other, each one of us is designed with beauty and helpfulness. Once upon a time, right on the edge of the forest, lived a golden-haired girl. This golden-yellow-haired girl's name was Goldilocks. She had such amazing and admirable locks that everyone who saw her was mesmerized. But despite her sweetness, at times she could be a rather naughty little girl. Every time she stepped out to play, her mother would have to warn her to behave. Darling, please stay in the backyard and don't go into the woods. Deep into the forest in a shack lived a bear family. A broad-shouldered papa bear, a medium-sized mama bear and a baby bear. Mama Bear always woke up early to prepare oatmeal porridge for breakfast. One morning, Baby Bear woke up earlier than usual and wanted to eat his porridge. But it was too hot. Mama, can we go out for a walk in the woods until our porridge cools down? Mama, Papa and Baby Bear left their porridges on the table and went out for a walk. The same morning, Goldilocks was playing in the backyard while waiting for her mum to prepare breakfast. But she was so bored of playing in the same yard all the time, and she was very curious about the deep parts of the forest. What would happen if I just went for a walk? She looked around, seeing that no one was around. She began running into the forest. When she got tired, she stopped and looked around. What a beautiful forest! Flowers, trees... Why didn't I come here before? She began to walk deeper into the forest. In the meantime, walking around with his family, the baby bear saw a beehive on the branch of a tree. Such a big beehive! I'm sure it is full of honey! Papa, can we eat some honey? No, my boy. That belongs to the bees. It's their home. We can't go in anybody's home and eat their food. It's not right. You're right. I think I will have to wait until we go home for my breakfast. Meanwhile, Goldilocks walked all by herself for such a long time. Finally, she got lost. She tried to turn back but could not make out the right way. She got really tired and hungry. She was almost in tears of her tiredness. She walked a little more and finally she came to the end of the road. And she came across the house of the bear family in between the trees. She quietly approached the house, walked around it, but she could not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Then she looked through the window she saw three hot steamy plates on the table. She went back to the door again and this time she knocked hard. The door opened. Goldilocks was overjoyed. She looked in and yelled. Anybody home? When there was no answer, she entered. She approached the table on the table, there were three bowls of porridge, one big, one medium-sized, and one small. Because she was so hungry, she wanted to eat the big one first. But the moment she put the spoon in her mouth, whew, her mouth burned, because the porridge was still too hot. She immediately reached the medium bowl, but she did not want to eat this either, because it was too cold. It's too cold! Finally, she dipped her spoon into the smallest one. Mmm, this porridge is neither cold nor too hot. It's exactly the way I want it. So she ate all the porridge in the smallest bowl. 
When she was done with her breakfast and felt full, she wanted to sit on one of the three chairs in front of the chimney to rest for a while. One of the three chairs was a big one, the other one, medium, and the last one was a small one. First she tried to sit on the big one, but she couldn't even climb on it. She tried the medium one, but this one was very hard. It was very uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest one. This one was very comfortable and exactly her size. But suddenly, the chair broke into pieces with a very loud noise. Goldilocks found herself on the floor and she did not know what to do. She walked through to the next door and here there were three beds. A big, a medium sized and a small one. First she tried the big bed. This one was too big for her and also too hard. Second one was a little bigger than her size but also too soft. So she lied down on the third and smallest bed. This one was exactly her size and it was very comfortable. So comfortable that Goldilocks fell asleep right away. Whilst Goldilocks was sleeping, the bear family came back home. Papa Bear had some wood with him that he collected for the chimney. Mama Bear had fresh berries and Baby Bear just could not wait to have his porridge. When they arrived home, they went straight to the table. Papa Bear had a look at his bowl and was so angry. Somebody tasted my porridge. Mama Bear also looked at her bowl. Somebody also tasted my porridge. And when Baby Bear looked at his bowl, he began to cry. <laughs> that somebody also tasted my oatmeal porridge. Not only tasted it, also ate it all. <laughs> they got up and started to look around. Papa Bear noticed his chair in front of the chimney. Somebody sat on my chair. Look, it's on a different spot. And then it was Mama Bear's turn to complain. Somebody also sat on my chair. And just like before, the baby bear began to cry again. <laughs> Somebody also sat on my chair, but broke it too. <laughs> the bear family curiously went to the bedroom. Somebody lied on my bed. Look how it's undone. Somebody lied on mine too. Somebody lied on my bed too. Then is still sleeping in it. <laughs> Papa Bear walked next to Baby Bear's bed and saw that someone really was sleeping in his bed. Slowly lifted up the blankets and they were really surprised to see a little girl sleeping in the bed. What is a little girl doing in our house? <laughs> Tell this little girl to get out of my bed now! <laughs> Waking up to baby bears crying, Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her and she ran out of the room in great fear. She went out of the house and started running without looking back. She got breathless from running, but she did not stop. And she didn't even know which way to go. Right at that moment, she saw her parents coming across from the forest. When she didn't end up going back home, they went out looking for her. Goldilocks was very happy to see her parents. She ran and hugged her mother. <laughs> oh, mummy! We were so worried. Are you okay? From now on, I will always listen to you. I will never leave without letting you know. <laughs> Goldilocks hugged her parents really tight. From that day on, 
As she promised, she always listened to her parents and did nothing without having their permission. She was a well-behaved and kind girl forever. Once upon a time, there lived an old couple in an old small shack next to a forest. They were living a happy and peaceful life. Their only regret was not having a child of their own. One day, when the old lady was making cookie dough in the kitchen, her husband came in. Darling, what are you cooking today? Oh, my darling, I'm baking a gingerbread man today. The old lady kneaded the dough and cut a gingerbread man shape. After putting it in the oven, she sat down and started to wait for the gingerbread man to bake. When she could smell the delicious cookie all around the air in the kitchen, she put on her oven gloves and took the gingerbread man out. Now it was time to decorate it. She made eyes out of raisins and a cute nose using candy. And then she used some cream to make his hair and clothes. And lastly, she used cherries to make some buttons for him. She had a look at her masterpiece and said, "My gingerbread man looks beautiful, but I feel like something is missing." The old lady looked at him again and, "Oh, his mouth! I forgot to make his mouth." She drew a mouth on the gingerbread man's face with the cream. "Oh yes, now you are complete, my gingerbread man." At that moment, something unexpected happened. Thank you. But but how can it be you are talking? Gingerbread man suddenly stood up and started running. Yeah, and I can also run. The gingerbread man jumped from the kitchen bench to the chair, then to the ground and started running fast to the kitchen door to the garden. Come back. Come back. The old lady yelled. The gingerbread man began talking while he was running. Yeah, run, run as fast as you can, but nobody can catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. The old lady got out to the garden and started running after the gingerbread man. The man looked out the window and saw his wife running and yelled. Hey, where are you running? The old lady answered to her husband whilst running. My gingerbread man ran away. I'm trying to catch him. The old man was speechless. The old lady ran, but the gingerbread man was so fast that it was impossible to catch him. After a short while, the gingerbread man came across a ranch. A grazing cow noticed him. Ah, oh, what a nice cookie! I should catch and eat him. The cow also began to run after the gingerbread man. Wait! Don't run! I'm gonna eat ya! Yeah! Run, run as fast as you can, and all ladies also trying to catch me, but nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. The old lady and the cow were running after the gingerbread man, and at this time, a pig noticed the gingerbread man. A gingerbread man, true to my taste buds. Wait, and I will catch you. The gingerbread man answered the pig whilst he was running. Yeah, run, run as fast as you can. An old lady and a cow are also trying to catch me, but nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. While they were running, the gingerbread man in front, the old lady, cow, and the pig behind him, a chicken noticed the gingerbread man while looking for some food. That has to be my lunch. So the chicken tagged along. Run as much as you want, gingerbread man. I'm gonna catch you. Yeah, run, run as fast as you can. An old lady, a cow, and a pig could not catch me. Neither can you. Nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man in front, the old lady. Cow, the pig, and the chicken—they all continued to run, but the gingerbread man was getting more and more further ahead from the others. 
The gingerbread man was so happy and very proud of himself. I'm the brightest and the fastest gingerbread man in the world. Yes, that's me. Nobody can catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. When he looked ahead, soon the gingerbread man saw that he was coming across a river, and he stopped because he knew that water could make him melt away. Oh no! Oh, what now? The old lady, cow, pig, and the chicken were close now. Right at that moment, a shifty fox appeared from behind a tree. I know how to swim. If you want, I can help you. The gingerbread man thought about it. What if you eat me? You don't have to worry. I don't want to eat you. I just want to help you get across. The gingerbread man trusted the shifty fox and jumped on his tail, holding on as tight as he could. The fox jumped in the river and began to swim. Meanwhile, the old lady, cow, pig, and the chicken came to the edge of the river and saw the gingerbread man crossing the river on the back of a fox. Helplessly, they watched them go, knowing they could not catch him anymore. The river began to get deeper, and the water started to rise. Hey, fox! Keep your tail up. I almost got wet. Up on my back, it's safer. The gingerbread man hopped on the fox's back. They swam for a while, but as the water got deeper, the fox's back began to sink in the water. I'm afraid that you'll get wet. Why don't you jump on my head, where it's a bit higher? The gingerbread man climbed up on his head. The fox continued to pursue his plan and dipped his head down in the water. The water has risen too much. Why don't you get on my nose? It's higher. So the gingerbread man got on top of his nose. Right when they were about to reach the shore, the fox tipped his nose, flipping the gingerbread man into the air and opened his mouth. The gingerbread man was going to fall into his mouth, and the fox was going to eat him. But it didn't work. While the gingerbread man was in the air, a crow flying right above them caught the gingerbread man with his beak. The fox just stood there, looking with his mouth open. The gingerbread man waited for the crow to fly a little further and asked, "Do crows eat ginger cookies?" "Yep." When the crow opened his beak to speak, the gingerbread man fell down and began to run as fast as he could. Yeah, run, run as fast as you can, and old lady, a cow, a pig, a chicken, a fox, and a crow also tried to catch me, but nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man kept on running and did not stop. If you see a gingerbread man pass you by running, do not try to catch him, because he is the gingerbread man, and nobody can dare catch him. The lazy girl. Once upon a time, a father and his two young daughters were living together in a land far, far away. One of the girls was very diligent, and the other was very lazy. You barely help at all, and I'm exhausted. Oh no! You are already doing the cleaning. Why should I get my hands dirty now? Their old father was a hard worker, and he was always tired. The only meal they had was soup and some dry bread in the evenings. One day, the old father made a request of his daughters. My dear daughters, you know I love you both so very much. I've been thinking. You are both adults now. And it is time for you to take more responsibility. I want both of you to find a job and work. You are right, Daddy. I will find myself a job. And what about you, my daughter? My sister should get a job, cause you know that's so her thing. 
but I think I'd better do the housework, Daddy. The old man was happy to see his daughters so eager. The next day, while the diligent girl left home to find a job, her father came to her. My dear daughter, I have some advice for you. Never refuse someone who asks you for help. Always be diligent. Love your job. Do the job that was given to you to the best of your abilities. Thank you, Daddy. I will never forget your advice. That's my girl. Bye-bye. The diligent daughter set off to find her job, while the lazy daughter, who said that she would do the household chores, did nothing. The house was getting more and more messy and getting dirty every day. Hmm. The diligent girl walked for days, but had not found anyone to work for. After a while, the diligent girl saw a tree with dried branches and roots. Hello, young girl. Can you clean my dry branches and give me some water to my roots? The diligent girl then cleaned all the dry branches of the tree until her palms were bruised and watered the roots with her own drinking water. Ah, thank you, young girl. But now you have no water left. It's okay. You needed help, and I helped you. I can walk a little more and find water for myself. The diligent girl continued on her way. Farther on, she came across a hearth with broken and cracked parts. Hey, young girl, can you repair me and make me look better? The diligent girl took a handful of mud near her and patched all the cracks on the hearth. Thank you, young girl. But you got so dirty because of me. Oh, it's okay. Clothes don't matter. You needed help, and I helped. The diligent girl left the brand new hearth behind and continued on her way. After a while, a lovely lamb appeared. But the lamb was black, like coal, from head to toe. Hello, young girl. I accidentally got into the coals and got dirty. Would you bathe me in that lake over there? The diligent girl washed the lamb by the lake. The lamb was white and soft as before. Thank you, but you're drenched because of me. You needed help, and I helped. I was already very dirty. Now I'm cleaner. The diligent girl continued on her way. When it got dark, she came across a beautiful house. Oh, where seven fairies lived. The diligent girl entered. Hello, I apologize for coming to your home without permission. I am a young girl looking for a job to work. You can work here if you want, young girl. There are seven rooms in our house. You will only clean six rooms every day. But you must not go into the seventh room. The diligent girl accepted the job. She cleaned six rooms diligently every day. As Fairy said, for a full year. She never entered the seventh room. And when she had enough money, she asked permission from the fairies to return home. Of course, young girl, you can go home. I'm wondering why you never entered the seventh room. My father used to say to do the job right, no matter what. During my time here, my job was to clean only six rooms. And that's what I did. That's what you told me to do. We would like to reward you for your honesty and diligence. Come on, come with us. The fairies asked the young girl to enter the seventh room. When the girl entered, she saw a lot of silver and gold coins. Now, you roll around in these coins, and any that stick to you will be yours. 
diligent girl tumbled left and right in coins. She looked almost like a star with the money sticking on her. Then the diligent girl left the fairies to return home. On the way, she came across the lamb she had washed before. The lamb was covered with pearls. I did not forget your help, young girl. Take and get as many pearls as you want. The diligent girl thanked the lamb and covered her arms and neck with pearls and continued on her way. This time, she came across the hearth she had previously repaired. I did not forget the help you gave me, young girl. Take it. My warm breads, my lovely cakes are yours. The diligent girl ate some of the bread given by the hearth and took some of it to take home and continued on her way. A little further ahead, she saw the tree. Its branches were covered with fruit. Come, young girl. I did not forget the help you gave me. Take it. All my grape juice is yours. The diligent girl thanked the tree and finally returned home. Thank you very much. What a fruitful experience. (laughs) Her father and lazy sister greeted her at the door. The girl's bundle was full of gold and pearls. The lazy sister was very jealous when she saw that her sister was so rich. Look at all those coins. I must go find a wealthy family to get a job from. If my sister has pearls, I will get emeralds. The lazy girl told her father that she is leaving home to look for a job. Oh, okay, my daughter. But you couldn't even work at home. How will you find a job out there? Hmm. The lazy girl left before her dad could even finish talking. She walked day and night. A little further down the road, she came across a tree with dry branches. The tree asked the girl for help. Hello, young girl. Would you clean my... Uh. I can't deal with you under the sun. My hair will get messy. Bye. Um, The lazy girl moved on. She saw a cracked and broken hearth a little further. Hearth asked her for help. I can't get my thin and delicate hands dirty for you. My nail polish goes bad. Bye. The lazy girl did not help the hearth either. Then she came across a lamb that was dirty, like black coal. And the lamb asked her to give her a bath. Ew! Disgusting! Get out of my way, you dirty thing! The lazy girl ran away. What a lazy little lamb! Can't even wash itself! And came upon a huge house. The lazy girl took advantage of this and asked for work from the seven fairies who were the owners of the house. The head fairy asked her to stay for a year and clean only six rooms. Don't forget, young girl, you will never ever be able to enter the seventh room. The lazy girl reluctantly cleaned all six rooms for months. However, one day she gave in to her curiosity and entered the seventh room. Instead of gold and silver coins, there were bees and bats inside. The bees stung the lazy girl in such a way that she was scarred all over. She was very hurt. The girl immediately left there and started running towards the house. As she ran, she saw the lamb, which she turned down her request for help. The lamb was covered with pearls. The girl wanted to catch the lamb to get some pearls, 
but the lamb ran away from her. <laughs> the girl continued walking and was very tired. At that moment, she came across the hearth that she turned down that requested her help. There were loaves of fresh warm bread on the hearth. When the girl wanted to buy a slice of bread, the hearth got hot and Lazy Girl's hands got burned. When the Lazy Girl ran away from there, she came across the tree which she had refused to help. There were bunches of fruit on the branches of the tree. When the Lazy Girl tried to pick some fruit, the tree leaned to the right. The girl ran to the right, but the tree leaned to the left this time. Tired of running around, the lazy girl finally gave up on getting the fruit. She walked non-stop for two full days and finally got home. Her father and sister saw her returning home in dirty clothes and injured, and they were very surprised. The lazy girl told what happened to her with great regret. Oh, and I can't believe it. I hurt so much. Oh. My dear sister, now you understand how important it is to be hardworking. Remember, girl. When you are honest and hard-working in this life, you will be rewarded for sure. After that day, the lazy girl has not been idle and lazy since. The two sisters both worked hard and were rewarded well. And this small family had happy, productive, and peaceful days throughout their lives. <laughs>